Hi, and in today's video, I'm going to show you some inspiration on how you can go about designing a poster. So the first thing you need to assess is your theme. So for this demonstration, I'm going to pick festivals. So let's just type in festival posters, press enter, and then go to the top menu here and click images. So this is your first port of call. There's loads of different options here. You can see a lot of them are quite complex, but they'll give you an idea of the sorts of text that you might want to include on your poster, some of the ideas, whether they used images or graphics or cartoons or just typography and text. Now, if you go to the top, we've also got design, music, illustrations, and lots of other different options at the top, including this one that says simple. So if you found that some of those festival posters were a little bit complex, then obviously you'll be given some far easier and simpler ones here. Now, if you can't find anything you want, there are a couple of other websites that you can go to and I will list them all in the description below. It's Pinterest, pinterest.co.uk or .com, wherever you are in the world. And I've just typed in the top here, festival poster ideas. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to copy that for all the other websites that we will visit. So again, you've got all the options at the top here. So you can click on different ones and also you've got the different inspiration as you go down. This is another website called dribble.com. And again, I'm going to place that search criteria into the search bar, press enter. And once again, you'll get a series of different posters. Some of these will cross over. You'll see some designs in the other websites that we visited. And again, you can make additional selections up here if you want illustrations, product design, typography, web design, etc. Muesli or Musli is another website that you can visit, which also has lots of creative design ideas. And finally, we've got Behance, which again gives you a search bar and will allow you to scroll through all the different design options. So that will give you a sort of feel about where you want to maybe go with your poster. The next thing you've got to look at is your structure. Now, one of the hardest things to do when putting a poster together is to look at where you're supposed to place things and the whole design itself. So if we go back to Google and you type in something called poster grids, click OK and just go up to images. Here you'll be given a series of images which display the types of poster grids or the layout that you can use for your posters. So let's click on this image here. And you can see we're given a series of lines or grids that you can utilize and put in your projects so that you'll have a level of design and cohesion about your poster. So let's say, for example, we wanted to use this design here. If we just take a screenshot of this poster or this grid like this, then all you need to do is, as you can see, I've got Photoshop here on the left and Microsoft Word on the right. Just simply insert that grid into your design and then you can place all of your elements over the top of it and then delete that grid once you've finished with it. It's a really good way to know where to place all your different text and your icons and your images. So that can really help with the design process. Now the third thing is color, and I think this is really important. So let's go back onto the internet. So if you're not sure about color, the first thing you can do is go to Google and type in color swatches and press enter. Again, go to images, and here you will have a vast array of color swatches to choose from. Now it's generally a good idea to maybe st stick to three or four colors. And at the top here next to color, I just type in at the end there, four color swatches and press enter. Generally Google's pretty good at just bringing up color swatches with just four colors in. You can see here it's five, but generally we'll give you four colors. Now in order to use these color swatches, again, just take your screenshot, whatever device you're using on a Mac, it's shift, command or control and four, just click and drag. Then once again, you can drag and drop your screenshot into your different piece of software and click enter. Then obviously you can use your color picker tool, just hover over the colors and select those colors. In addition, in Word, it might be a bit more challenging depending on whether you've got the color picker or not. In Word, you'd have to go up to insert, 
Then you'd have to go to pictures, click on the drop down and select picture from file. Select your screenshot and click insert. Okay, it's not working. Move that. Click on this, arrange, click on the drop down, wrap text in front of text. There we go. And there's your color swatch. I'm not sure why this is grayed out. It's misbehaving, I don't know why. So let's say you've inserted a shape and you need this color. Let's just quickly insert a shape. Go to shape fill, go to more fill colors. And then you'll have this color wheel. Now on some word software, you'll have this color picker and others you won't. Now, if you have the color picker, you can just click on it, hover over the color of your choice, just click. It will appear in this square here and just click OK. And there you'll find that color has been duplicated. And that's how you can use the color picker. Now, alternatively, if you don't have the color picker, what you can do is you can go on to Adobe Color. And this is always really helpful if you've got an image as well. So if we go back up to Google and we type in Adobe Color, this is a really useful tool to have. I'll just go to all Adobe Color Wheel. And in here, Adobe can give you huge amounts of inspiration for a poster. Now, if you've got an image or you've got a color swatch, you can go to something called Extract Theme. So you can drag and drop your file or you can select a file from the computer. So I'm going to choose my screenshot and click Upload. And as you can see, I've got all of my colors from my swatch, but I've also got these hex codes, which I do believe you can use in Word software if you don't have the color pick at all. Alternatively, if you're working with an image, you can go to Replace Image. And let's say you're working with this flower and click Upload. It will upload the flower and it will give you a color swatch based on the image. So it would be a great idea then to continue to create your poster with these colors alone, trying not to deviate too much from them to ensure you have that level of cohesion. So now you've got your inspiration ideas from all the different websites. You've also got a design template with the grids that will show you where to place all your different text, all your different typography. And you've also got ways in which you can enhance your colors. You can extract your colors from images and you've also got options for color ideas as well. So just one final thing. If you go to trends up here, Adobe will give you all the current trends in all the different genres, fashion, graphic design, etc. And it will show you all the color swatches from all the different images. So again, for example, if you wanted to go to illustration or graphic design, it will show you some current inspiration. If you want to view more of those, just click view more and you can see Adobe will provide you with all the different options. If you click on one that you like, let's say this one, again, it will give you the color swatch and all the different hex codes as well. So I hope that's given you some really good guidance on where to begin with a poster design because I know from my own experience it is a real challenge sometimes. I'm not a designer so I do need a lot of inspiration but I do hope that has helped. If it has please like and subscribe and have a great day.